Hello and welcome to Tracy Momi Reads. I am back again with another video. Today, I'm so excited to uh, talk about the book I'm going to be reviewing. It is called First Lie Wins by Ashley Elston. First Lie Wins. And this should have like the words, uh, Bookstagram made me do it <laughs> on it because this is a recent um, release. Uh, I think it, I'll have to look, look up the date when it came out, but I know it came out within the last few months or so. And it has been everywhere. I've seen it. Uh, and of course, like I've said before, whenever I see a book that I think I might want to read or that sounds interesting, you know, I'll screenshot, I go look at the blurb and I was immediately you know, drawn in. And there was this, you know, part of my brain that was like, but girl, we have so many books we have not read yet. That book will be there. Chill out. I mean, I have, I, it, it was in a cart online. It was a cart. It was in the cart at Target um, several times. Like I was going to actually buy this book, but I tried to rein myself in. So what I did is I requested it through the Libby app, you know, from the library. And it was like, oh, you're going to be waiting for this forever. And, you know, sometimes on Libby, you know, you could be the 500th person in line or the, you know, 100th person or whatever. But what happens is if whoever's next in line, if they're not ready to read it, because what they do is like, you can skip a turn if you're not ready and then they'll put you back, you know, in the queue after that person. So a lot of people must have skipped or maybe a lot of people did like me and read it in one day. But I will tell you, I was not expecting to get this book so soon. And it came in uh, one day and I was, I was about to start another book. I had like a few other books lined up and this one came in and I immediately... Uh, bumped it up to the top of the list, mainly because uh, I was getting it from the library and I wanted to go ahead and finish it so that the next person waiting could finish it. <sighs> okay, so this book is in the, I want to say suspense thriller genre. I mean, it had a bit of mystery, but it just, it was so different though than some of the mystery suspense thriller books that I've read, and I'll tell you why. First of all, like right out the gate, there wasn't a murder. Like, you know, first chapter normally in books like that, there's a murder and we got to solve it. And we're working with the police to, you know, make everything happen. Something like that happened, but it was midway through the book. So there's this woman named Evie and which is short for Evelyn. And we know from the blurb that she's a professional liar. I mean, you don't go in knowing whether or not she's just a con artist. Is she a scammer? Is she a spy? You know, um, but, you know, she's calling this guy Mark and, you know, which usually is somebody that you're setting up to uh, fool or rob or something. And there's this guy named Ryan who is her Mark. And so the way that it starts off is like she's in this relationship with Ryan and, you know, everything's going well. She's about to move into his house. I mean, you know, it, it's, it has the makings of what sounds like a love story or a romance, right? Then we got to the chapter where she was going to be moving her stuff in. She told him that, you know, he was going to take off from work. She was like, no, you go to work. You know, I'll do it. I don't have a lot of stuff. Um, and she's like calling Goodwill to bring her stuff. Like she gets like boxes of books and boxes of stuff and has them in, you know, like strategically placed in her apartment to make it, which was previously empty to make it look like, Oh, I've been moving. I mean, she goes as far as buying like ketchup and mustard and squeezing out half of it into the trash so that, uh, you know, putting the rest of it in the refrigerator to make it look like she's been living there. When I was reading this, I was like, Oh, she, 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 she detailed. <laughs> she's serious about whatever it is she's doing. So, um, as you go through the book, you learn that the the way that she kind of got involved in this whole thing, like this life, which uh, she is someone who, I don't even know how to, it's, it's not really, 
Whenever I think of espionage, I feel like that's more the government has a hand in it, right? But this is more freelance type stuff. She has this um, boss named Mr. Smith that she works for who sends her essentially on these assignments. Um, she just gets a, a mark. She has to find out like, you know, personal things about them to kind of infiltrate their circle. And then she's given what she's supposed to do. Hey, get this flash drive or uh, take some pictures of him or, you know, make this happen. So that, that's all she's ever given. And then she, you know, gets it, gets in, gets, you know, she does what she's supposed to do, gets in and then gets out. And then she's paid quite handsomely for it. So then like we get some, some, also some backstory, um, showing as a teenager like she was in high school she was kind of doing this on her own she 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 was like born to be a scammer but it was kind of out of necessity her mom had cancer and they were living in a trailer park you know didn't have a lot of money and so she worked i think at a florist with a florist and because she you know would see people coming in like if they had money uh, or, or things like that, or they were having weddings or big events, she would be ear hustling, you know, listening to what's going on. And she would find a way to kind of get to that particular event or, uh, go when the people weren't home or whatever. And she was like robbing people, you know, basically to get stuff like their jewelry or whatever and pawning it because she needed the money to help her mom pay bills. Um, and then it became a compulsion, you know, after that, even after she became a young adult and her last thing that she did by herself, she got caught. And that's how, kind of how she got, uh, on the radar of Mr. Smith and he kind of got her out of that. And then she started working for him as a thank you or whatever. And then you fast forward a decade later, she's still, you know, with this person and, the author gives us back stories on each of the aliases because Evie Porter, I think was the last name that that's an alias. That's not really her name. And, um, we get like, um, like flashbacks, if you will. And she'll have like the name that the woman was using at that time and what that particular job was about. And we start to get different players coming in and, and, and the pieces are falling together. And we also start to learn why she's like, why Ryan was a mark. Okay. Cause that's what I was like. I'm like, why is he a mark? He seems so nice. He seemed like he really liked you. What's going on. And then when you find out, you're kind of like, Oh, he might be a little shady too. Okay. I see now I see, but it just really kept me engaged. Like I said, I finished it in one day. I, I needed to know what was up. Um, then there's like the, the author throws in this curveball because there's someone who enters the picture that totally scares the shit out of Evie because she's essentially taking on a persona <laughs> that's really too close to home. And um, then th there's a betrayal that happens. And the whole time, the main thing that the reader, as well as Evie, what we're trying to figure out is who the hell is Mr. Smith? Because, like, he's starting to turn on Evie, and, and she's trying to get the upper hand. And I will tell you, like I said, she she's crafty. You know, anybody that's going to go buy some ketchup and mustard and squeeze it out, half of it, and put it... Because it would look suspicious if you had some brand new condiments in your place. Like, you don't eat. So, to have done that, you know, she she dots every I, crosses every T, you know, has contingencies in place for anything that may go wrong. So, kind of reading about her process and watching her work, so to speak, I found that incredibly fascinating. Um, and was on this roller coaster of a ride throughout this book. Like I said, trying to figure out who the hell Mr. Smith was. Um, and I don't know. I feel like when it was revealed, I, I thought I knew and I thought I guessed it. And at, towards the end, the author was making it appear it was that person. And I was like, oh, well, shit, I guessed that a long time ago. But then it didn't end up being that person. Um, and the person that it ended up being, I'm trying to see how I feel about that. I did a video, um, if then, like if you like a, a certain book that you may like, uh, another book that I'm going to be posting, you know, next week or the week after. And now that I'm, I'm talking through this book, 
the book, The Last Flight, has an element that reminds me of something that happened in First Lie Wins. When you find out who the big bad wolf is and how that person had been kind of dealing with them already, you know? Um, like I said, I don't know how I feel about who it ended up being. However, I feel like Evie's plan was flawless and she was like always 10 steps ahead and she did what needed to be done. Bravo, bravo, bravo. You know, I, like I said at the beginning, one of the things that I feel like that makes First Lie Win, Wins different was the whole thing that when the book opened, there wasn't a murder, right? But another thing that I felt like that made this book very uh, different and interesting, and I, I think I like it, um, is the ending. Usually, we find out who did it, and we're either left with a random cliffhanger or a twist that leaves your mouth hanging open. When this one ended, it was like a happily ever after type situation. And I was not expecting that. I was not expecting that. And it made me start rethinking, okay, was I reading a love story? <laughs> but I, I, I think that it worked well, you know, because I always have a problem with books in this genre and how they end. Um, I was questioning the whole thing with who Mr. Smith ended up being. But I feel like the author more than made up for it with the actual ending that we got. And then that, that epilogue piece, you know, that was chef's kiss. I, I want to tune into the next episode now because this needs to be a thing, okay? But overall, it was really good. I really enjoyed it. Um, not the first time, and I'm sure not the last time that Bookstagram or Book Talk will live up to the hype. Sometimes I feel like some of the books that are recommended on social media like are overhyped like i've read so many books or started reading uh so many books that no <laughs> i'm like who the hell said that this was good and i get that we all have our differences of opinions and and things like that but there are some books that i just feel like i've read personally and then a lot of people have read and like given five stars you know like sidebar uh, Tia Williams' latest book, A Love Song for Ricky Wilde, I've not read anybody that said they've hated that book. Everybody has given that book five stars. You don't see it like all over book talk. You don't see it climbing up to number one on the New York Times bestseller, but it is a hell of a story and much better than so many of the books that I've read that people on those platforms have recommended. But, you know, we're not going to start doing math on this channel today down from my soapbox I go. But back to First Lie Wins. The title I thought was pretty clever too because it referred to something that Evie said. They had invited some of Ryan's friends over to get to know her. And you know, like people um, in his life were like, who is this woman he's, you know, cause they hadn't been dating for long when he asked her to move in. So he had these friends and their girlfriends, you know, really cared about him or whatever. So they were like, like on her like who are you and where are you from and where do you work and where'd you you know doing that whole thing and as they were asking her questions because of course you know that wasn't she wasn't really Evie and that wasn't nothing she had told him or anything that she would tell them would be the truth so she said that you when people ask you questions you have to give them just enough information and put it in a way that satisfies their curiosity, but you haven't really told them anything. And she kind of phrased it as she said, so basically the first lie wins. So the first lie that you tell and how you craft it, that's going to kind of squash anything maybe potentially that comes after that. Really enjoyed it. Highly recommend it. And I'm going to go ahead and put this back into the rotation at the, um, at the library so that the next person can go ahead and read it. If you have read First Lie Wins, what did you think? I mean, it, it was a ride as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I saw everything unfolding in my mind. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you like this video and go ahead and take this opportunity to subscribe to my channel and share this video with someone who you, you know, think may enjoy my content. Thanks again, guys, for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you next week.
Bye.